You know, I really wanted to do this A-roll outside, but then my neighbor immediately starts mowing. I'm literally walking out the door and I hear the motor start up. So we're gonna start in here. I'm just gonna do this kind of talk to camera thing, a little bit different than sitting in my normal chair. But today we were doing a follow-up video over that video I put out a few weeks ago about lenses. I was doing a pretty big lens test to test the chromatic aberration on some lenses. And you know, I, I basically was saying, what if I bought a pristine lens? Or what if I tried out a, you know, a lens that's optically sound and doesn't have all these flaws, but we know is gonna have less characteristic than like a vintage lens per se. And I was like, what if we put a, a filter on the front of it or something to give it a little bit more character or take the edge off a little bit and see how these perform. So the first lens that I really wanted to try out was the Zeiss Milvis lens. So we got the Zeiss 35 millimeter f1.4. I've got the EF mount version. Kind of recommend getting the Nikon version because you can de-click the aperture and then you can use it on any camera. You could even use it on something like an Arri Alexa or something that doesn't have the kind of electronic EF mounts that a lot of other cameras have. What's cool about the Zeiss Milvis is they're really not that expensive and they're optically very good, especially the 35. We will get into that, but the 35 millimeter is really the one to look at. I bet the 24, 25 is also pretty good, but the 50 does have some chromatic aberration. We are going to test that out in this video today. Now this is gonna be maybe kind of a long video when you're comparing lenses, you need some time to look at the images, see how they, you know, how each lens performs in different environments. So I'm going to play out quite a bit of footage here. But what we're going to test is the Zeiss Milvis 35 millimeter F1.4. We are gonna test that without the speed booster on the red Komodo. We're just gonna do Super 35 at F1.4. And then we're also gonna test the Sigma 40 millimeter F1.4 just because I know I should have done a 35 millimeter, but the 40 millimeter is just a really fun focal length and they don't, not a lot of manufacturers make 40 millimeter lenses. And I really love 40 millimeter because you can use it super 35 and not have to go quite as long as like a 50 on super 35. But also when you use it with like a speed booster or on a full frame camera, you get this really fun focal length where it's like a little bit more separation than a 35, but you're still fairly like kind of wide. You can get really close to your subject that way. So I really like the 40. Um, we're gonna use the Sigma Art 40 here because it is one of those really nice clean lenses, like optically sound lenses. We're actually shooting on it right now. This is the 40 millimeter at f1.4 with the speed booster. I also have a 1 8 black satin filter on here, a Tiffin filter, um, which we are going to throw on all these lenses as well to see how it kind of takes the edge off these uh, sharper lenses. I hope I'm in focus. I found that these Sigma lenses for some reason go like they focus, the autofocus works like an inch behind where it should on my red Komodo. Don't know why, maybe it's a fluke, maybe it only happens sometimes, but I have noticed, you'll even notice in some of these tests when I'm doing the Sigma test, it's almost like the focus is always just here instead of on my eyes. Let's see if we get close here. Is it on my eyes? Seems like it's on my eyes right here, but when I back up, oh great, we've just, we've just lost focus. There we go. I'm using the uh, beta face tracking autofocus on the Komodo right now. I don't know how it's gonna perform. I've never tried it before. Okay, and we are also gonna test a kind of lens that people haven't talked about in a long time. It's the old Canon 50 millimeter L series F1.2 lens. This lens is interesting because you throw that on a full frame camera or on a speed booster, you can get open it up to F1.2 and it has autofocus, which is fun for some situations. I don't use autofocus very often unless I'm doing this, but um, there's some character in that, but it's also a pretty clean lens. So I thought that'd be fun. That's a fun one to test. And then to just like compare it even further, we are going to test with some vintage lenses. I actually have a old Zeiss ZF lens, which is, you know, they're kind of Zeiss's older version of the Milvis, which has a lot more character. It really looks like a vintage lens. It does not look like they're modern lenses at all. Um, but we are still talking about, you know, the difference between these kind of modern nice lenses and vintage lenses and which one you would want to have in your kit or if you wanna have both in your kit. Um, and it's really good to see them side by side, see the bokeh differences, see the flaws, the character differences. So we're also gonna be testing out the 50 millimeter F1.4 Zeiss ZF lens. I believe it's a planar design. And of course, we are going to throw in a Sigma 18 to 35 um, in a couple of these, because it is the kit lens that basically everyone gets when they buy a camera. And there might be good reason for that. So that's also gonna be a part of the mix. I feel like the lawnmower stopped. We might be able to get to take the rest 
rest of this video outside. Okay, so I was wrong. He is still mowing, so we're gonna continue the video right here. So for the first test, I just put on the lenses, some with the speed boosters, some without, and then I would immediately throw on the black satin right after to see how it looked differently with the black satin filter on it. So first we had the Canon 50 millimeter F1.2. Um, it did have a little bit of chromatic aberration. It was hard to see in this environment because it was cloudy skies, I was outside, but you can see a little bit of it here on the monitor and stuff when you have the black you know, contrasting off the background, which is when you can usually get your, your chromatic aberrations, when you have like a bright subject and you have a contrasting subject in front of it or something like that. So the 50 is fun. Uh, the bummer on the 51.2 is that you can't really put a cine gear on it because it's a autofocus lens that doesn't have hard stops. Not something I would have in my kit probably, but what you can do is you could buy the Canon CNE cine versions of that lens is the exact same optics that are in the cinema lens. It's a lot more expensive, obviously, but you could get a full cinema housed lens with the same optics if you wanted to. But I really like the character here. It does open up to 1.2, and with the speed booster on my Komodo, you are just gonna get a really nice shallow depth of field, especially on that 50 millimeter. And you are going to have a little bit more character in the bokeh in the background than some of these upcoming lenses like the Milvis and the Sigma. So something else you'll notice between all these lenses, they all have a different color rendition. Um, from what I can tell looking at all these tests, the Sigma, the Sigmas always seem to have a lot more saturation and contrast, which if you really like pay attention to like my lips and stuff, my lips, the magenta really pops on the Sigma lenses, which I found very interesting. Um, and that's something to note. It's something that's kind of like, I don't know if I like the Sigma lenses as much because they just don't look as organic. Yes, they are like clean and perfect, but there's something a little off about having that saturation. Of course you can take that down in post, but right out of the camera, you're going to have that issue to deal with. But maybe that's something you want. Maybe you want saturation, maybe something for a corporate look, you just want it to look clean and nice and that's the way to do it. Okay, and then we have the Zeiss Milvis lens, the, the lens that we're really trying to test out here. Very clean lens, looks very nice. Um, I'm actually so surprised by the optics of this lens. This lens is only like $1,300 new. Um, which is pretty remarkable. I mean, uh, that's probably similar price point to the Sigma 35 f1.4, and I'm thinking the Milimus is probably a little bit nicer. Now the 40 millimeter, I think, is around that price as well, um, and so those are kind of in the same league here. But what's so great about the Milvis lenses is that they, they have this really nice housing, and they have hard stops, and then like I said, if you get the Nikon mount, you can actually you know de-click your aperture and have manual aperture control. Um, and they're just really nice lenses. It's really surprising how inexpensive they are. And then the 40 millimeter with the speed booster and without, um, the 40 millimeter looks really nice outside, not far off from the Milvis, honestly. They're kind of similar in nature. Like I said, one is more saturated though. And it's really fun that you can throw it on the speed booster. Of course you could throw any of these lenses on the speed booster because they're all EF mount and you can basically get them wider, um, get that kind of more full frame look which is something we're talking about. Um, I think we're always talking about having a bunch of lenses in our kit, you know, different focal lengths, you know, you maybe want a 50, maybe you want a 35 and a 25. But what I think is fun and what I might start doing, if I'd buy this Milvis lens, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of scenarios where I'll just run the Milvis lens, the 35, on Super 35 without a speed booster. But then if it's like, oh, I would normally switch to a 24 or 25 right here to get a wider lens, or rather than buying another lens, I'll just throw on the speed booster, which will give me another stop of light because I'm throwing on the speed booster and then it'll automatically like change the focal length. It'll make it wider um, in perspective on my sensor. So having a 35 is basically like having two lenses as long as you have your speed booster. And I don't think a lot of people have talked about that before, but I think it's a really handy way of doing it. Of course, a speed booster does cost like $600. And so some people would just be like, why don't I just get another lens? But a 35.14 basically would turn into like a 24.14, which would cost easily another thousand dollars if you were trying to buy that lens. So it's something to think about, something kind of fun, and you're just using the one lens all the time and you don't have to carry around a bunch of lenses in your kit. Something worth considering if you are buying a super 35 millimeter camera that you can adapt and speed boost. And the next lens we're looking at here is the Zeiss ZF. 50 millimeter f1.4, much more vintage looking. Man, the bokeh in the trees looks so fun in the background. I love it. I think I need one of these lenses in my kit officially. This lens has lots of chromatic aberration. It has this really weird like ghosting kind of hazy effect. 
um, which in some scenarios you might want that. You want that kind of character look, then you should definitely look into one of these lenses. They're like four or $500 used. Um, and then you can easily convert them to EF very, very easily and throw a gear on them. The one I'm using has a gear on it, has a like, front ring on it and stuff. Definitely fun, but vintage. Um, it's not even, they're not even that old. I mean, they're like the last, a couple versions ago of the Zeisses, but they uh, do have those old characteristics that a lot of us like. It's just funny comparing the Zeiss, like what Zeiss used to make and what they make now, Just they're just in different territories. They're, they're just made for totally different things, it seems like. But what's kind of fun is when you throw on this black satin, it kind of gives this very, very light glow to the image and it lifts the shadows just a little bit, just kind of decontrasts everything just a little bit. And to me, it kind of reminds me of this old Zeiss because that Zeiss, um, ZF does have a little bit of that kind of ghosting going on. So it's like you're kind of trying to find the middle ground, but you don't get all that fun character and the bokeh in the background. And this, the vintage lens definitely is not saturated at all like the Sigmas. It's uh, definitely much more low con. And then of course, at the end here, we're going to throw on the Sigma 18 to 35. We are looking at it at the 35 millimeter focal length. It's f1.8, so it's not gonna look quite as fun in the background, not as quite of shallow depth of field. But you can see this lens, uh, you know, it's pretty saturated. The greens kind of pop and it's fairly sharp and it's just a really good lens. And for 700 bucks or 500 used, it's insane how the 18 to 35 is just a good lens for so many things. No character, nothing fun about it, um, but it's like, it's the workhorse lens. It's gonna get anything done for you. And as you know, I am taking this journey now um, into doing more narrative work. Um, and so, you know, I, when I'm picking out my lenses and stuff going forward, basically I need stuff in my kit that will help me with my commercial work, which will help me with my YouTube work and will help me with my narrative work. Um, so I wanted to do a test with all these lenses in kind of the narrative environment. So I've kind of like, acting like I'm on the phone here and I'm walking into the shot um, and I'm cropping it to 4.0 as if it was, you know, a widescreen aspect ratio like a movie, just to kind of see how it would look just for fun because I'm just trying to have fun testing out these lenses. Um, and so here's a few of those same tests back to back to back, all of the lenses without the satin filter on it this time, just all um, basically stock lenses with the stock color profile that I'm using um, to see how they all look in that environment. Basically shooting up into the trees to see how the bokeh looks and the contrast looks. Then I did a quick little test here in my kitchen and I basically started abandoning the other lenses and decided to only shoot with the Milvis 35 millimeter without the speed booster at f1.4 with the black satin filter on it. And for this quick test here, I'm comparing it against the Zeiss ZF. So basically you can see what a modern version of a Zeiss lens would look like up against the older one. And you can see the differences and see why you probably would want both of these in your kit depending on the project. They both look really nice. And the reality is the Milvis is just gonna be reliable. It's gonna perform every time. It is just, it's gonna be a new lens. The build quality is gonna be great, but you are gonna have a little bit less character than the old ZF here. 
um, which is a little bit more chromatic aberration. You can see it a little bit around the top of the roses here. There's a little bit of red coming in, some magenta, but that bokeh in the background looks so nice. It's obviously a little bit bigger because it's f1.4 with the speed booster. Um, with the 50 millimeter versus the 35 f1.4 without, which is going to give you a different apparent aperture. So your bokeh balls are gonna be smaller on the 35 f1.4. Now I do have the Zeiss 50 uh, Milvis here that we're testing out as well, um, but it's not quite as exciting because it's kind of like the in-between in like the bad way. It's like, oh, it's clean and nice looking, but it does have chromatic aberration. It's like, I only want chromatic aberration if my lens is gonna have character. That's the trade-off there. So I don't know if I'm really hyped on this 50 millimeter Milvis lens. If you wanted to get, you know, make it really clean, you'd probably have to step up to the 55 Otis, which is, you know, like five or $6,000 lens. And it's apparently like the mini master prime. It's a perfect lens. I would love to try one of those out. Then I decided to take the Milvis out and just kind of shoot around with it. I was hanging out with my, um, my gaffer friend Al at his house. And so here's some footage from that. This is the Milvis 35 millimeter F1.4 on the Komodo with a 1 8 black satin, a Tiffin black satin filter. Let me tell you, this combo looks so nice. It just seems so reliable. And it's just like, I know I can throw this lens on whenever I want and just like get good footage. Just get like, you're never gonna be like, oh no, is the lens gonna do this? Is the lens gonna flare weird? Is the lens gonna have chromatic aberration? Is there gonna be barrel distortion? Um, is there gonna be like vignetting on the side? Is it not gonna be sharp? None of those things are a concern when you're shooting on this Milvis. And it's kind of remarkable for the price. What's also fun about the Milvis is you can easily cinevise the Milvis. So they act, Zeiss actually makes gears for this body style. They're a little expensive, but they can just, they just pop right on the lens. And then you can obviously put different filters, thread on the front of it. Like you could put like, you know, a ring on there so they could all match. And then the ZF lenses, you can um, convert permanently to EF. The basically the Nikon mount version of the Milvis, you could convert to EF and have the, with just a screw, you can unlock the aperture and make it stepless. The Milvis lenses are really cool. Now, if I get this lens, I'm probably gonna get uh, another brand of gear, a Cine gear to go on it. Probably something a little bit cheaper than the Zeiss one because they're $200 and I feel like you can get the same thing for like 75, maybe even one that does better. Um, so I'll probably do that if I do that. I don't know if I'll gonna get, I don't know if I'll get the Nikon mount or not. I do think the stepless aperture is fun. It does future proof it, but really, I almost never shoot on a camera that doesn't have the option to convert it to EF. And if I'm just buying this for my kit, which is I'm gonna be using my Red Komodo, and if I upgrade a camera in the future, I'm probably gonna get that Red Komodo X, which we, we should definitely talk about in the future. Um, I don't have the ability to get a Red Komodo X right now. I'm focusing on other things in life, but I definitely will wanna get that Komodo X. Um, we should talk about that sometime, but that's for another video for sure. I think this is a pretty simple conclusion here. Um, the Milvis is great. The Sigma is great. All of these lenses are great. I really comes down to what you're looking for. I really think having something like this vintage Zeiss lens and then having a modern Zeiss in your kit is probably the move. Depending on the project, you just pick the lens that makes the most sense. Something else to consider, um, they do make a, what are called the Zeiss CP3 cinema lenses. These are kind of expensive, but from what I understand, from reading online, they're basically the Milvis line, but cinevised, but they're all T2O. Now, I don't know why they did that. I don't know if there was something optically they wanted to keep consistent across the board, but like oh, most of the lenses are F1.4, which means that they'd be like somewhere like a T15 or a you know a T16 in real reality. So I don't know why they're all T2. They're pricey, but you could basically get these Zeiss lenses in this fully cinema house lenses if you wanted to. And they also have electronic data on them, I believe. So you can talk to your camera and tell you what aperture you're at and stuff like that. So that's pretty fun. Likewise, um, the Zeiss ZF that we're testing out here, um, if you get the old Zeiss CP2s, so there's a couple of versions of the Zeiss CP2s. Um, they have the super speeds, which only came out, they only made so many of these. And basically those are T15 Zeiss lenses, cinema lenses. Um, and they're, you know, they're, They've got the chromatic aberration, they've got the character, but they have really nice cinema housings on them. So they'll work, you know, seamlessly in any like paid situation or you wanna have all the lenses be the same size and shape and so on and so forth. They're still going for like two grand used. Um, 
because people still like them, I guess. I don't see anyone ever shooting on them anymore. I used to shoot them on, on them all the time, you know, like a decade ago, because they were like the only thing you could could rent for that price and buy at that price um, for the longest time. So basically you could go the old route or the new route and you could still get them all cinema housed if you wanted to as well. So that is an option and something definitely worth considering. I think it'd be kind of fun to have just the 50, just the, the old 50 1.4, so the T15 CP2. That would be fun to have just one of those in my kit that I could speed boost. Or if I wanted to go longer, I could just take off the speed booster. Um, and then it'd be fun to have the Zeiss Milvis 35 F1.4 in the kit. Thinking about just like having these random lenses like that, because why not? And I really feel like when you're buying these things, it's like you want to separate yourself from the other people in your market. And like I live in a pretty small market. So it kind of makes sense just to have different lenses. Like everyone around here is all buying like the DZO Vespid Primes where they have like stock Sony lenses. So it's kind of fun having uh, different types of lenses in your kit to kind of give you your own look as a cinematographer. Before we go, I do want to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is a great place to build your website. I've been using them for over a decade now. And it's all on one platform. You can, you know, it can do everything for you. You can, you know, start a business on there. You can start an e-commerce site on there. Um, or you can just do a portfolio like you might want for yourself as a filmmaker or as a cinematographer. It's super easy to update on your own. And you can build them with like a pre-existing template or you can just build the whole thing from scratch. But they make it easy to embed videos from like YouTube or Vimeo. You just paste the link on the website and it'll embed it right into your page. So if you're anything like me and you need a website to show off your work online, well, you can just do that with Squarespace. Just click the link in the description to get 10% off. And I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, so that's it. That's all I have for this video. If you have any questions about these lenses, please drop them down in the comments below. And please like this video if you found it helpful. And until next time, guys, I'm Sensor Sakurai. See ya. Thank you.